It's Mo. Today I want to do the ratings and review tag. This was originally created by Scott and Nell at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Nell has created her own channel called Bookunt, but Scott can still be found at that channel. This tag is all about how you rate and review books, and I thought it was a timely tag to do because in another video I'm going to talk about why I don't give star ratings. So keep your eyes peeled for that video as well. Question number one is tag some folks. I want to tag Jess from Jess the Book Freak. I want to tag Danielle from Miss Danielle. I want to tag Kevy from Say Kevy. I want to tag Pensively Reading. And I want to tag Roy Reads Everything. I don't think that any of these people have done this tag. This is a fairly old tag, so I could be wrong. Some of them I know give star ratings, but I wonder what the motivation behind those star ratings are. So I would love to hear their thoughts on this. Question number two is how do you know you've just finished a good book? Is it a thinking or a feeling response? For me personally it's both. I can like a book that's not necessarily a good book and I can dislike a book that I can recognize as a well-written or accomplished book. Just being a good book doesn't mean I'm going to like it or hate it. Just being a bad book doesn't mean I'm going to like it or hate it. So a lot of times I can recognize writing that I think is powerful or well done or skilled on some level that could depict a good book. But for me, a good book has a lot to do with how I felt about the writing, what I experienced, if I liked the storyline, if I felt close to the characters and identified with aspects of the storyline. So feelings often went out above thinking. Question number three, when you begin to form your review rating, what is the qu first question that you ask yourself? I don't know if I ask myself any questions. I'm either just excited about a book or not. So I definitely get excited to film my wrap ups. I get excited to talk about a book in vlogs. I get excited to write a review when I write reviews, although that happens very, very rarely now. And I think one of the things that I know is that I can identify other people who I think would like it or I would like them to read it so that we can discuss it. Or maybe it's that I think of people who've already read it and I think of their review, things that I agree with or disagree with. I don't necessarily ask myself any initial or immediate question. A question that comes up later would definitely be if I would reread this book because one reason that I keep books on my shelf past the year that I've read them would be that I would want to reread it. Question number four is do you give star ratings? Why or why not? There is an if yes series of questions and an if no series of questions and we're gonna go with the if no series of questions because I do not give star ratings. If no, what language do you use to convey the quality of a book in your reviews? I think I talk about books very much the way I talk in real life and so I don't think I use a certain range of language or specific idea of language to convey it. I think one of the things about booktube is we can talk very technically about books certainly but we also just talk about books that we like, that we want other people to read, that we dislike, that we don't want other people to read and I think the way that I talk about books is if you were my friend and I read a book. I find that I'm excited to talk about books, whether they're good or bad, and that's basically why I started a booktube. So although I don't have a specific set of language to talk about my reviews, it's mostly just talking about my feelings, talking about my experience, talking about my excitement for a book or lack thereof. And then it says, does this form an informal rating or ranking? So I have done videos where I've ranked certain books in like least to most liked or I ranked books that I really, really enjoy. But no, it never leads to a star rating system or a rating system. I either like books okay, I like them a lot, I dislike them, I feel indifferent towards them, but it's not any kind of informal or formal rating or ranking. Except when I'm like for a fun time ranking books, which is a fun time and something that I would like to do more of. I've found that I enjoy ranking the books that I've read from a certain author in the order that I like them or reading the first line of a book and ranking them by which I thought was the best or most interesting. So it's just like a fun exploration, but not necessarily a formal or informal system. 
Question number five is, do you believe every book has its perfect reader? Does this contradict the idea that a book can be bad? Do I think every book has its perfect reader? I guess so. I'm sure that every book in the world someone likes or someone appreciates in some way, but I don't think that that makes the idea that books can be bad wrong because you can like a bad book just like you can like a bad song or bad movies or whatever because one, good and bad is subjective to a certain extent, of course, and two, I love bad movies. I love bad books or things that get me in a way whether they are would be considered a well-written book or not whether they could, would be considered a skilled author. And sometimes I'm sure a book has lots of merit and I just don't like it. So of course, books can be bad or good, but also people can like bad or good books. Question number six, what book that you hated have you recommended? I haven't really recommended any books that I've hated. There have been a couple of books, especially since starting booktube, that I strongly disliked or actually hated that I haven't gone out of my way to recommend, but because I review every book on my channel in my wrap-ups, I definitely try to state the purpose of that book or the synopsis of that book without my feelings and then tell you my feelings on them. You might hear that synopsis or read it somewhere else and think, wow, I really want to try that book and you might enjoy it. Is that a recommendation for a book that I've hated? I guess so, but not really. Mostly I feel like I say, if I hate a book, I say you probably should skip it, but I do understand that a lot of the books that I have disliked over the years, other people are going to like, so I don't want to dissuade anyone from reading it if they're interested in it. If they're interested in it, they should go for it, but if they find that their tastes align with mine, they might find that they don't enjoy it the way that I didn't. Question number seven, what makes a book good, bad, or great by your evaluation? I think a lot of times, similar to the second question, it's about a feeling, how I feel, what I was feeling when I came to a book, what my reading mood was at that time, if I like the characters, if I like the plot, if I like the vibe, if I like the reading, if I didn't like any of those things. I probably should do a video of like what my favorite books of all time are and what aspects of those books I look for in other books. I saw Meg with books do a video like that and it was just so interesting. She also did one about things she doesn't like in books, so things that she should probably stay away from, and that was an interesting video as well, slightly different. So I think feeling, vibe, writing style, characters, plot, location, all those things go into my evaluation, but there I couldn't name specific things that made a book good, bad, or amazing in my evaluation system. Because I hate animal violence in books, but there are plenty of books that have animal violence that I loved, so how do you know? Every book is different. Come to it with an open mind. Hope you love it. See what happens. Question number eight. When evaluating the quality of a book, do you have specific criteria or aspects of the book, such as character development, that you consider? Does this change if you are writing an in-depth review versus just thinking about the book for enjoyment? So I kind of said this. I don't have specific things that I've thought about in my mind that make a book good or bad in my evaluation. There's certain aspects of books that I like repeatedly in many books. There's certain aspects in books that I dislike repeatedly in many books. Does that mean I'll love the book or hate it? I don't know. I don't think so. I think sometimes there are things that I dislike, but I love the book. There are things that I like, but I hate the book. You just never know. I think that when I write reviews or I do a dedicated book review, I do both of those things very, very rarely. I just think it's how much I enjoyed the book. If I really liked it, or I thought it was worth talking about in depth, I will talk more in depth about it. It's really how excited I am about the book, and that could be like a positive excitement and wanting to just share this book that I loved with everyone, or it could be like a kind of a negative 
excitement and warning people away from it or sharing how much I dislike the book. Excitement plays a big factor, but no, I don't go super more in depth or think about a book in a different way if I'm writing a review or if I'm just doing a wrap up. But I will say that since starting booktube, I do think I think more critically about books in general, both the writing style and the larger implications of the story on myself and the world. Not all the time, not every book, but I look for more real life aspects in books, I think, or how they relate to real life situations in a slightly more critical manner. That might also be an interesting topic for a video because I would love to explore more my own thoughts and feelings and how booktube has changed how I view books as a reader and how I think about them critically as a reader and whether I want to go further down that road or pull back and just read books purely for enjoyment. Question number nine, do you consider star ratings or average ratings when choosing a book to read add to your TBR? No, never, not at all. I don't look at star ratings, I don't care about star ratings, I think star ratings are completely subjective and mean absolutely nothing to me, which is partly why I don't give star ratings myself. Like I said, look for that video coming soon. And I also don't look at average ratings like on Goodreads or anything like that. Occasionally, if it's pointed out to me, I'll look at it, or if I read a book, I'll go back and look at it, not in a way that would influence my reading at all. I don't think about it and it doesn't really occur to me to look for it. I do consider people's ratings that I like to watch on booktube or friends if they do rating systems in that if they like a book I might want to read it. But it doesn't mean that I hold it against the person if I don't end up liking that book. If someone gives me a recommendation or they put a high star rating on something, I know that I might not necessarily like it or I might not necessarily feel the same way about it. But but because they've read it, it might influence me to want to read it. Question number 10. Who on booktube does reliable and interesting reviews of books that you know you can use to decide if a book is for you or not? What makes their reviews so good? This is an interesting question because, like I just said, no matter what someone reviews a book or rates a book at, I never think that because of their rating it's going to be 100% for me, or because they loved it I'm going to love it, or because they hated it I'm going to hate it. But there are lots of people who I love to watch who, if they like a book, I I might be more inclined to pick that up, partly to enjoy that shared experience of both having read the same book, partly for the idea that we could potentially discuss that book, partly because I want to see what it was that they liked or disliked about it. So I think basically everyone I watch on booktube, I value their system of rating and their opinions on books. That's why I watch booktube. I would say for people that I share their their opinions a lot of times, just the book freak. We read very different books a lot of times, but if she is inclined to like a book, I'm more inclined to pick it up. Kevy is definitely a person like that as well. She reads such interesting things. I might not like a book that she likes, or she might not like a book that I like, but I just enjoy her review so much I want to know what books she likes, and maybe I will pick them up. For big booktubers, I love Books and Lala. She got me into booktube in the first place, so so she has a special place in my heart, but I think we also read a lot of similar books. I think we have very different feelings about the books that we both read. Books that I've read that I think she'll enjoy, she often doesn't, or vice versa. Books that she's read that I think I might enjoy, I don't. But I love hearing her opinion, and she has a very thoughtful and thought-provoking way of thinking and critically thinking about books, so I like to hear that. I also love to hear Jalen at Bar in the Bookcase talk about books. He thinks extremely critically about books and he always picks up on things I wouldn't necessarily have thought of in books. We read extremely very different books. He's very much like literary fiction and I'm very much a genre. Our reading doesn't overlap that much, but I love to hear what he has to say about the books that he reads. 
Question number 11 is, does that those booktubers use different language than you to evaluate and review the overall quality of a book? I think the people that I'm closer with review books in a similar way, but I think that the booktubers that I'm not friends with definitely have a more critical and wider view way of looking at books, and maybe that's because they read way more books than I do, they've read way more books than I have. Books and Lala reads much more diversely than I have in my life so far, and I think they're also bigger booktubers, they've been doing this for longer, they know more about it. Jalen does his podcast where he talks to writers, so he thinks and talks about books in a very different way than I ever would because of our different experiences. And Kayla thinks and talks about her books with a much more global perspective with a much bigger idea of both what the books are about or how they intersect with the world and also how they intersect with her view of the world and I think she's taught me to examine books in that way but we still examine them very very differently. Those were all the questions for the ratings and review tag. I hope you found this tag interesting. If you did definitely feel free to tag yourself and answer any of these questions in the comments down below. Let me know if you do start ratings. Let me know if you base your star ratings on the objective quality of a book or your subjective feelings about a book. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!